Some sound waves are too low to hear, but not too low to feel. This is infrasound, invisible, physical, and capable of affecting the human body in measurable ways. Sound is the vibration of air, but not all vibrations are audible. Humans hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Below that, we enter the infrasonic range, frequencies under 20 hertz. Infrasound travels farther than audible sound. It bends around buildings and terrain. It passes through solid walls, and it penetrates the human body. So what happens when it does? Resonance. That's the key. Every object has a resonant frequency, a specific vibration it prefers. Push it at that frequency and it vibrates harder. It's how opera singers shatter glass, or how a badly timed footstep can collapse a bridge. Humans are no exception. Our chest resonates around 60 to 100 hertz, our eyes near 18 hertz, the abdomen closer to 4 to 10 hertz. If infrasound hits these frequencies with enough energy, it can cause nausea, headaches, anxiety, or even disorientation. And the energy doesn't have to be extreme. Sustained exposure to levels above 90 decibels, about the volume of a lawnmower, at infrasonic frequencies can induce discomfort. At 120 decibels, pain and panic are likely. At 140 decibels, infrasound can cause lasting harm. But nature got there first. Elephants emit infrasound as low as 14 hertz. It lets them communicate over distances of 10 kilometers or more. Whales do the same underwater. Volcanoes and earthquakes release it when they shift. And scientists use infrasound detectors to track them. In 2003, researchers at the University of Salford ran a live music experiment. Without telling the audience, they embedded a 17 hertz tone in some of the music. The result? People reported unease, chills, and dizziness, more than in the non-infrasound sections. They couldn't hear the difference, but their bodies felt it. Then came Havana. Starting in 2016, American diplomats in Cuba began reporting strange symptoms. Vertigo, nausea, headaches, even cognitive issues. Some heard high-pitched sounds before falling ill. Others didn't hear anything at all. Theories included microwave attacks, mass psychogenic illness, and sonic weapons. While no cause has been confirmed, the case raised one question. Could infrasound be weaponized? This is also where public imagination meets pseudoscience. The so-called brown note is a popular myth. The idea that a specific infrasonic frequency could cause involuntary bowel movements. The concept has appeared in television, movies, and online forums. But there is no scientific evidence that such a frequency exists or that sound alone can trigger that kind of physical response. What people often refer to as brown noise is something else entirely, a type of random signal with more energy at lower frequencies. It sounds like a deep rumble and is often used for sleep, relaxation, or sound masking. It is infrasonic in character but it does not induce physiological loss of control. The confusion shows how misunderstood low-frequency sound remains, especially when it comes to its effects on the human body. However, there are real acoustic weapons. Long-range acoustic devices, or LRADs, use directed sound beams. While not infrasonic, they can produce focused beams above 150 decibels, loud enough to cause immediate pain at 50 meters. They're used by police and military forces for crowd control, border enforcement, and even against pirates. 
While no documented weapon operates purely in the infrasonic range, low frequency effects remain a topic of military interest. Research has explored the use of sound to influence behavior, induce discomfort, or disable targets non-lethally. What limits infrasound weapons is physics. Low frequencies are harder to focus and require large emitters to generate significant energy. But in enclosed environments, tunnels, vehicles, or structures, the impact could be magnified. Infrasound is invisible, inaudible, but not intangible. It moves through earth, water, air, in us. In understanding it gives us one more tool, or one more risk, in how we shape the world around us.